Get on my left. Get on my left. Too strong, way too gold. Oh, Got it up, and it's stuck. Get on my level. For my money, the, the blocks are always fun. All right, he's back. Four-time All-Star, two-time All-NBA. Boogie Cousins is here today. We got a, we had a Kentucky show. I feel like we've sort of become a North Carolina, Kentucky show this week. I'm not mad at it, Boogie. Uh, but you did play a year there. You reached the Elite Eight. Today, we officially start the madness, uh, at least in my mind. What was your mem like the biggest memory you have of that time? Man, uh, I would say definitely around tournament time. You know, that's that's when the most excitement happens throughout the year. The most, you know, it's usually when the most unexpected things happen. Um, it was plenty of times, you know, down the stretch of the, our, our freshman year where, you know, we were really tested. Uh, things could have easily went the other way. Um, you know, my, uh, my tip-in shot against uh, Mississippi State in the SEC tournament was, you know, one of the most memorable moments where, you know, that could have easily went the other way for us. Uh, so that's something that sticks out. Uh, just the different environments you play in during during March Madness. Uh, during our year, I believe we were in Syracuse. So uh, mm -hmm. we, we ended up playing in the Dome setting. So it was something that, you know, we weren't accustomed to. Uh, the backdrop was, you know, something that threw most of us off. Uh, only, you know, only real hoopers really know the difference between, you know, that backdrop that and just, perception. Yeah, that death perception. So, uh, you know, a lot of things came into play, but uh, I would say uh, the most memorable is definitely the SEC tournament. And DeMarcus, you were on that team with John Wall. I know how close you guys were, uh, are, knew each other before even Kentucky. Tell me this, is it true he pranked you in high school and told you that he was going to Duke and then just hung up? <laughs> Man, John's such an asshole. <laughs> but yeah, you know, uh, you know, we uh, we thought about teaming up, you know, as youngsters, and um, you know, he, he played a nice joke on me right the day before. Uh, you know, John was, you know, a super hype player coming out, so um, deservingly so. I don't want to say that in a disrespectful way, but uh, deservingly so. So uh, he was one of the last guys to announce. So, you know, leading up, you know, I thought we were on the same page. We're going to. Well, at the time, it was uh, Memphis, actually, before Cal left. But uh, Cal ended up leaving to go to Kentucky, so I, I automatically follow, followed. Hmm. And uh, John was one of the last guys to announce where he would go, you know. So he called me right before the announcement, like, yo, I'm going to go to Duke. And he just hung up. Like, yo. <laughs> Worst <laughs> prank ever. <laughs> so I called the dude, I called him like 10 times, like, no answer, no answer. He finally texts back. This is how much I asked. So he texts me back, like, oh, I'm just fucking with you. I'm, I'm coming to Kentucky, bro. Yeah. It's like not thought so, out at all. It's the worst prank I've ever heard. Boogie, I can't, right. um, I can't think of a school that levels up. I mean. Uh, Kentucky it has legendary alumni. What's your Mount Rush, Rushmore Ooh. of Kentucky players? Man. Oh, my God. You just, got, you just got four spots. That's bro. tough. Are we talking like all time? No, or like all, Calipari yeah, forever, game? ever. Because listen, four <laughs> wow. can come out of y'all group alone. That's a tough one, dude. You gave him a tough one. <laughs> like, oh my god! Because you got to, you got to think old school. You got to think the new school I guys. Know. I know. Oh, it's been so many dominant players who come through Kentucky, bro. You want to think about it? We'll get back at the end. By the way, just to put in perspective. Hopefully, hopefully y'all just forget. You no, know, we're not, I, we're, we won't forget. <laughs> but I'll tell you why it's unfair, Boogie, and you can throw it back at us. We asked Tyler Hansbro his Mount Rushmore of annoying Duke players. <laughs> that was a little bit easier for him to come up I'm with. Sure. So you I'm can probably sure. do that as well, by the way. Um, you're going back to Taiwan, the Beer Leopards. I love that, by the way. Uh, your experience so far, I, I, I love yeah. the logo. What's it been like? Tell us, uh, tell us some stories. Man, it's been amazing. Um, honestly, uh, you know they they treat me really well. Um, you know, I'm as as I step into this next you know stage in my career and things like that. I'm not done playing ball. Uh, I still love the game with you know all my heart. So uh, you know I'm I'm cool with experiencing different places and you know different parts of the world. So uh, you know my experience in Taiwan has been incredible. The people there are incredible. Um, they really love basketball. The fan support there is just unreal. And uh, I get to do what I love to do, which is play ball. Um, so uh, I'm excited where I'm at. I'm, I'm learning about different cultures, things like that. Um, my, the biggest thing I think I've learned is just realizing how much 
you know, talent is around the world. And, um, you know, I was lucky enough to only experience the NBA early in my career. I didn't have to go overseas. I didn't have to, you know, take the G League route and things like that. So, you know, I was by default brainwashed to the point where I thought, you know, the most elite talent in the world is specifically in the NBA. And that's that's just not the uh, case in, in the reality of the situation. So uh, my, my eyes have been open when it comes to just the, the high level of talent, you know, all around the world playing this game. So, uh, you know, I'm I'm appreciative of that part. And, um, you know, I'm just enjoying the game. I'm going to ride off in the sunset I'm a, and I'm going to ride to the wheels fall off. So, uh, you know, that's where I'm at right now. Are you hoping to make one more, one last run to the NBA? Or at this point, you're just, you want to play the sport that you love? <laughs> now, I, you know, I really want to play um, the sport I love. I mean, obviously, if that opportunity ever comes about, you know, that's something I would really, really, you know, consider. But um, I'm also, like, so content and so happy in the space I'm in right now. Like, it's, like, probably the first time in my life where I actually, you know, feel free and feel like a normal person. So uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying that part of life. Uh, just being able to be a father every day has been incredible. Um, Shit, that's probably one, probably one of the hardest tasks I've ever, you know, experienced. Just waking up and being consistent on a daily basis. So, um, you know, it's a challenge that you know I've embraced and I'm really enjoying. So, uh, to answer that question, that's something I would really have to consider. But you know, like I said, I'm I'm super content where I'm at in my life right now. Demarcus, I'm sure you see the chatter though. Every time you know big man goes down, they always mention you as someone that could sign somewhere, and and you, the speculation is always there online. I mean, how many teams do you feel like you could go and and at least help improve, uh, be a guy that that supplies some depth for? Um, which team do you think needs Boogie the most? I, I think I can help you know any team. Um, if it's being in a you know veteran leadership type of role, I got plenty of knowledge, and I'm willing to you know drop knowledge to these youngsters. Um, and on top of that, if it's a team that's really actually trying to play for something, I know my IQ and experience can help any team. Um, I mean, when you look uh, you look over the landscape of the league right now, that's that's probably one of the, the biggest things that I think is missing from the league. It, it has become a super young league, so the experience and the IQ of the game, you know, isn't where it was or or what we're accustomed to seeing in the past. And um, no knock to, you know, any player or anything. That's just the times we're in. So uh, when it just comes to experience and bringing that in to any team, I think that's going to elevate any team in the NBA. You know, we're going to do a little memory lane here because uh, you started your career six and a half seasons in Sacramento, six different coaches, which is crazy to think about, never more than 33 wins. If, when you look back at that chapter, what could have been different? Was there one piece that maybe had it been different, it would have gone a different way? Uh, you know, I, I've spent the majority of my, you know, early career tr trying to figure out that exact question you asked. And I'm, I'm a firm believer that everything happens for a reason. Um, what's that reason? I'm still waiting to see. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, that's just how sports go. It's, it's not always about the talent. You know, sometimes it's the circumstances. Sometimes it's the environment. Like, everybody isn't blessed with, the, you know, the best opportunity. But at the same time, it's an equal playing field when it comes to making the best of your situation. And that's all I tried to do throughout, you know, my time there. So, uh, you know, it's, it's not much to really, you know, say I wish this, this could, could have happened or if this was done better, it would have been, you know, that's, you know, that's hypothetical. It doesn't really matter. So, um, you know, I made the best of it, you know, and um, shit, I'm here now. So it's all good. Back in the day, you would, you would trade it to the Pelicans. Um, you had that opportunity to share the, share the front court with, with, with AD. He's averaging 24, 12, two blocks right now, but still facing so much criticism. Why do you think that is? Is that a personality thing? Is he too quiet? He doesn't defend, it, doesn't defend himself ever. Why, why do you think he faced so much criticism still playing at a high level that he is? Uh, I, just, I think it comes with, you know, the environment. Um, Obviously, being teammates with one of the greatest to ever touch, definitely on the, you know, the Mount Rushmore of, of players in LeBron James. Hmm. When things go bad, we all know it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a list of guys that's gonna be blamed before it gets to the best player on the team or one of the best to ever play. And you know that's just then the environment. On top of that, he plays for the Lakers. They have a tough fan base. Like, right. They expect excellent. I mean, you were there, Lou. You know how oh, yeah. this shit. Goes. 
They expect you don't get criticized on. as a Laker. Yeah. It's, it's a completely yeah. different experience being and a Laker than a Clipper. Average, oh, absolutely. Completely different experience. You can average experience. 25 and 12. You can average 25 and 12, and it still not be enough. Like right. that's that's not enough. It's championship or bust. No matter the no matter the season, no matter the roster, no no matter the time, and that's just the territory that comes with you know being a teammate of LeBron James because greatness always comes with him, and the same thing goes with, with being a Laker. So uh, I think that plays a huge part in the criticism he receives. And it may be a little bit of him not, you know, speaking. Um, you know, AD's just not that type of guy. AD's the type of shut his phone off and just not give a fuck, mm-hmm. which is, you know, <laughs> it works for him. Right. And, you know, it's other guys where they're going to speak up and defend themselves. So, um, and usually the more quiet guy, people feel like, you know, they can go at him a lot more. And like I said, if it's, for instance, maybe a Draymond, Draymond's going to defend himself. Draymond's going to oh, speak yeah. up. And, he's gonna, and you ain't got to <laughs> never worry about getting his words mission screwed because it's going to come straight from the horse's <laughs> mouth. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it's just a different in personalities. And like I said, it just comes with the environment as well. DeMarcus, you reunited with Kings owner Vivek Ranadive at All-Star Weekend in Indy. We saw the picture Vivek Ranadive posted. What was that like? Are we going to see you at a Kings game coming up? Um, it was actually cool, man. Um, you know, it was good to talk to him. Um, it had been a while. Um, we, we had messaged, you know, a little bit over the years, you know, a little bit here and there, but for us to uh, actually meet in person, it's, it's been some years. So, uh, it was cool to, you know, see him and talk with him. And, um, you know, he, he helped me, you know, um, put some things to rest. Like, uh, I knew some things with done a little weird with my time there and, and he validated a lot of things that I couldn't, you know, figure out at the time. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy for that. We, we're on the same page. We cleared up a lot of, you know, rumors and things like that. And, you know, he let the truth be known as to why things played out the way they did with, with my exit. So uh, I, I'm appreciative of that. And um, I'm moving forward, man. You know, we're on a clean slate. We're going to figure things out. And it's, it's probably a great chance I do end up at a game soon. So, so I'm sorry. excited. I like that. That's what's up. Yeah. And DeMarcus, I know you went to the Warriors for what ended up being KD's final season there. There was his Achilles injury. There was the Dray, uh, the incident with Draymond during the year. Um, obviously, the loss to the Raptors in the finals uh, in six games. What stands out to you most about that season? Man, yeah. It's a lot. I would just say it, it was a lot, honestly. But, that, you know, that comes with championship teams. So, um but for for me, it was uh, the positive stuck out way more than any of the negatives, which is you know crazy to say because it was a lot that season. But um, just us when that five touched the floor, and you know we were all healthy. It that's probably the most fun I could say we all had playing basketball at this level, and probably the easiest we've ever had playing at this level. Like. <laughs> Seriously, it, Is that it was the like, best starting what? five ever. I mean, it's in my Steph, opinion, yes. Clay, and obviously, it's a small sample size, but when we were all healthy, it's it was ugly, bro. It was it was ugly. So uh, and it was it was fun, and it was like I said, every night we were low key just kind of going through the motions and beating teams by twenty five. So um, <laughs> it was a lot of fun <laughs> and and easy basketball. And I I've never been on the floor with that much t- Hall of Fame talent at one time. Like, it was incredible, bro. So, like I said, I think the positive stuck out more than, you know, the little bit of adversity that we dealt with throughout the year, so. Let me ask you about the young fella, Wimby. Um, having mm-hmm. an incredible rookie season. I still got Chet as my rookie of the year. <sighs> I, I still value winning, and he's the second best player on that team. I ain't gonna lead you. Wimby is You playing. just did. No, 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 no. Wimby's having an incredible season. What would you rank him amongst players, and are you a fan of his game? What are you seeing from Wimby? Huge fan of Wimby. Um, man, I, what I see from Wimby is, you know, once again, we're starting to, like, in real time, see the evolution of the game once again. And um, I think it's, it's dope to see. I think he's a high character. I've never, you know, got the chance to meet him in person. But I've, I've heard a lot, you know, throughout, you know, the grapevine throughout the they league. They say he cut his phone off, too, at 930. He said, don't call me after 930. I'm not Smart available. Guy. Smart guy. Yeah. Yeah, that's a bright future. Yeah, that's <laughs> the signs of a bright future. But, uh, you know, high character guy, loves the game. Um, and that's something that's kind of unspoken about in the league. Usually when it comes to big, it's not, it's not a lot of bigs that love the game. 
So uh, the fact that he loves the game, that's that's a good sign for him. That's a uh, fact too. That's a highly point. skilled, highly skilled. Uh, I mean, he has all the intangibles to to you know sneak his way into that that Mount Rushmore. So uh, obviously he's still young in his career, but incredible, incredible talent. And um, you know, I look forward to seeing how his career plays out. Boogie, we're up against the clock. We will get back to you on your Mount Rushmore. We're not going to forget. I will never forget. Uh, but we appreciate the time. Yes, we're going to take a quick Keep break. Keep doing your thing over there, brother. Yeah, best appreciate of luck. Antoine Walker, when we come back, it is a Kentucky Twan. day. Antoine. Woo! Run it back, we'll be back. Run it up, run it back. Run it up, run it back. Run it up, run it back.